Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I want to show you a Jim Rickards clip. Jim Rickards is making, he makes a point here. Now remember, the caveat here is that Jim Rickards um, is a gold bug, okay? So he's a, I guess you'd call him a gold maximalist. maximalist. But, but what you need to understand is that Jim Rickards is extremely connected all the way to the heights of power in the United States. This guy's got quite the resume. When he speaks, I tend to listen. I want you to listen to what he says about Bitcoin, okay? He's been anti-Bitcoin for a long time. I just want you to hear what he says about what Bitcoin has not been through. Uh, well, basically, it's, it has been around a long time. We, Bitcoin has never weathered a, a recession or a financial crisis. So Bitcoin was invented in 2009. We have not had a recession or a financial crisis in 2009. We did in 2008, 1998, and many others throughout history, 1929, 1873, you name it. I know how all the other asset classes perform in panics. You know, not just gold, but gold, stocks, bonds. You, you can see how they perform. We've never seen Bitcoin's performance in a financial panic. So that's a big uncertainty right there. Leave, leaving aside the criminality and the electricity usage and the fraud and painting the tape and who's behind this exchange. Leaving aside all those issues, which I think are big ones, even just in a pure economic sense, we have no idea how Bitcoin will perform in, in a panic. My estimate is not very well. Okay. I thought that was interesting. And those of you out there who have never heard this, and by the way, my yard man just pulled up, and that means that you could hear a blower a lawnmower, you could hear a hedge, looks like my hedges might need trim, you could hear a hedge trimmer, and then they'll come up uh, at my front door and they'll blow off the uh, patio there, so it could get loud, but I, on we on this channel, we always power through it. Now, now that you've seen what, what Jim Rickards thinks of Bitcoin, with all you new people arriving, let's look at what he thinks of Stellar XLM. Merchant acquirer accepts your MasterCard, then they got to hand it over to the local bank. That bank has to send it to a correspondent bank in Sydney, Australia. Bank in Sydney, Australia has got to run it through the Visa network. Then they got to get paid. Then they got to send it back to this little bank. You know, so think of all the steps, all the costs, etc. What if you could replace that with a blockchain? But they are doing this, by the way. This is a real pilot. We're using the Lumen token. Well, IBM has built this. Lumen is the token of choice. It's working extremely well. You know, as value is moving around without going through this clunky central bank network and corresponding bank network that I just described, it's cheaper. That means, you know, people can either lower prices or offer more services. And it's also big on remittances. You know, a lot of companies All right. acquire. So there's that. That's on XLM. And here's Jim Rickards on Ripple. People are saying it's not my idea of a reliable source. That said, even the IMF needs devs, and I'm sure Ripple has some good ones. That doesn't mean XRP will be a reserve asset, more like an ESDR. So he hates Bitcoin, but he knows about the ones with the use case, and he sees how they could be used, which is everything, utility. Now, the market is, is starting to bounce back a little bit. Uh, we've got some... And, and embarrassingly, we have the one that is not in the realm of Stellar and XRP is up 21%. And the why of that is even more embarrassing. And that is because Elon Musk showed a picture of a stupid dog on the moon. That's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. Now, we'll get back to Elon Musk and what he's saying and all that and how it's affecting the market in a second. But first... I wanted to show you all something that what you're looking at this is a live stream Ooh, there's that lawnmower you may hear it okay what you're looking at this is a live stream that was going on when Bitcoin oh, and the reason I wanted to show this is about the digital asset market in general for those of you who this is your first time you've seen a crash in crypto and all that this was when Bitcoin, I believe, was at 50 cents. And this is a live stream where a guy watches it go from 50 cents to a penny. Watch this. 
and we're trying to go under one. Notice I have not seen a positive tick. Since this began at 17, every single tick has been flat or negative. Now these are green, but the reds are cells, the greens are buys. Here we go, we're at 91 cents, we're at 90 cents. We are going all... That blower is right here at my steps. So I'm going to talk to you for one second until he gets that blower off the steps. I mean, this can really affect your YouTube channel when you've got yard men who are all over the place. There's, a, there's an army of them out there. Okay, he stepped off the steps. So just listen up as close as you can. Way down. This is wild. We are down to 70 cents. 60 cents. This is the flash crash in Bitcoins. We are down to 50 cents a coin. I cannot imagine what news is accompanying to this. We're at 29 cents. We're off the charts. And here we go. We lost the Mt. Gox feed again. We still have not seen one buy. Uh, we're Look down that. to 12 cents. Look at 11 that red cents. Candle. 10 cents. Wow. This is it. Feed gone again. We are down to 10 cents. We're down to 9 cents. 6 cents. We are going 5 cents. We are down to... Wow. I don't know what this means, people. We are down to 1 cent. There's still no buying. Could the critics have been correct? Has the system been hacked? I don't know. We are flatlining at 1.2 cent a Bitcoin and they're selling. People are selling 0.03. That's an amazing clip, but it really puts things in perspective. But what I, what I would say to you is, look, <laughs> the future, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to mention it again in a minute, but the future is with digital assets that are going to be used, that have utility. That's where my focus is. I do own some Bitcoin more or less as a hedge. That is it. Okay, but Bitcoin is is not going to be used the way some digital assets like smart contract platforms and others. Now, CNBC, they were weighing in on what Elon Musk has been doing. I wanted you to hear this. Majority, and, and it's my opinion, this was the smart strategic bet at the right time. I mean, Musk and Tesla continue to be forward thinkers. And I think it's something where you know they're going to continue to talk, talk, but walk the walk when it comes to Bitcoin. Now, ultimately, why we believe the stock old and market cap hits a trillion is from EV. That's what's going to get it there, heading, heading into a golden age of EVs. But Bitcoin, that just speaks to the DNA of Musk. And he's had the golden touch the last few years. It's hard to bet against him. That's why most investors still in that camp, despite some of these white knuckle period we're seeing over the last 48 hours. So I want to get to the EV market, but I, I want to ask you another question here about the cryptocurrency and the tie to Tesla. Elon Musk obviously moved uh, the price of Bitcoin pretty markedly by just adding one word tweets, um, changing his bio on Twitter. I mean, we know he's gotten in trouble in the past for things that he's tweeted. Is this a slippery, slippery slope for Elon Musk to get involved and to make these kind of statements even if one word clearly he's able to move the price of this cryptocurrency in a really big way yeah he moves markets and i think it is a slippery slope and i think the broader issue it's a sideshow that overshadows the transformative ev growth story that's happening in tesla china front and center and i think that's the worry of investors we've seen it with musk before you take the good with the bad but in terms of twitter that's sort of been some of the downfall that we've seen no doubt, I think it's contained right here, but I think it just sees what we've seen. It, it's gonna continue from a Bitcoin perspective. It adds volatility and it's a bit like playing with firecrackers. There is some downside. I think I think the guy's gonna come under some scrutiny. Now, Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 19,452 Bitcoins for 1.026 billion in cash at an average price of 52,765 per bitcoin as of 224 20, 2021 we hold total 90,531 bitcoins acquired for 2.171 billion dollars 
at an average price of $23,985 per Bitcoin. Wow, this guy's putting himself out there. I like the guts. I like the guts. Okay, um, then um, CS May, he sent me this tweet from Anderzell. If you're going to be a maximalist, be a utility maximalist. And I agree with him. No utility, no value. That's what I say. He's right. I wanted to uh, bring something to your attention. Um, link to, they're in the, my, my sponsorship section. Link to, it's linqto com, And you can also download, they're in my description. You can download their app. These guys allow accredited investors only to buy private um it's private equity in um, in unicorns like technology companies, blockchain companies. They've got um, they've sold out of Kraken. They've sold out of Uppo. They've sold out of Ripple. But I think they're going to add some more Kraken onto their platform um, for. And you can go on there and, and apply. You know, accredited investors look look up what that is. But they have a process where you can apply to be an accredited investor on there. Go check it out. I said moral hazard. Anyone you remember yesterday? The, uh, the they had a settlement of the Bitfinex and Tether lawsuit. Today I see this tweet where Tether, and I'm not sure that's true or not, but I, I know it goes on. Where five is that? Yeah, five billion U.S. dollars of Tether was minted, and I said moral hazard. Anyway, if you moral hazard, that's a flashback to the financial crisis. They referred to moral hazard specifically as if we if we bail these banks out in other words if we give them the green light that all these risks they just took um, are okay and that there's a backstop and they'll be bailed out won't they go and take even more risks and that's what it reminds me of okay now um, XRP James uh, he's the digital asset investor channel official former Navy SEAL I would not want to mess with a Navy SEAL um, he sent me this article, three critical questions that will hopefully be answered by the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple. One, when does a digital asset transition from a security to a currency or something else? And I think this points to why Ripple wants discovery on Ethereum and what the SEC said to, SEC said to the people at Ethereum and the conversations that the SEC had internally about Ethereum because they said that it was a security transition and we've, we've shown you how um, Vitalik Buterin conducted an ICO. I think the SEC owes everyone that discovery and explanation. Two, how will President Biden's administration approach digital assets? We will be seeing that shortly because uh, March 3rd, I believe, was when um, Gary Gensler is going to be confirmed as the new SEC chairman. How should disgorgement be calculated for a violation of Section 5 and only Section 5 after Supreme Court's decision last year in lieu? In the Ripple case, the SEC alleged that the company raised over $1.3 billion from its sales of XRP and the two additional, uh, two individual defendants sold approximately $600 million of XRP. In the past, the SEC has often argued that all proceeds of an offering made in violation of Section 5 were subject to dis disgorgement as ill-gotten gains, da, da, da. So anyway, that's going to be decided how that's going to all work out. Man, that lawnmower is loud. That's why I'm talking loud. XRP Crypto Wolf made me aware of this. Uh, Bitru will launch Flare Finance, which is D-Flare, airdrop. So um, Bitru is being very aggressive with um, how they're participating in all of this. Um, okay, a couple more things. First, XRP Crypto Wolf Ripple is hiring a senior counsel. Ripple senior counsel will provide legal advice for development and launch of Ripple's products globally, including law and regulations surrounding cryptocurrency, banking markets, and cross-border. I looked at the job description and this was the most interesting part for me under the what we're looking for section. Fintech and cryptocurrency experience preferred and experience with rates, FX, derivatives, and or capital markets is also helpful. There's been several people who have disappeared that I've covered on this channel, disappeared off social media, and they, they acted like they knew something behind the scenes. They all said to a man that, FX, that what XRP was really about was FX and derivatives. 
and so I find that interesting. Now I showed you this clip of Bill Gates yesterday. M at Oracle um, put, tweeted this out, XRP between the lines connecting dots, and this is what Bill Gates said, if you have less money than Elon, you should probably watch out, it uses a lot of energy. And then he shows this, open source software empowering organizations to create interoperable digital payment systems to increase financial inclusion. In that clip, Bill Gates had said that, well, let's show it to you, I'll show it to you again. Listen to what he says. Society that produce output. Uh, Bitcoin happens to use a lot of energy. Uh, it happens to promote an anonymous transactions. They're not reversible transactions. Our, the Gates Foundation does a lot in terms of digital currency. All right, and that's what he's talking about here. Uh, the Mo Moja Loop is the name of their foundation. And look who their sponsoring members are. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Coil. Well, they've got a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and they also have a Mo Moja Loop Foundation. But the sponsoring members are Coil, Google, Ripple, the Rockefeller Foundation. Does my son need to draw you a picture? I am the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that my son can draw pictures of XRP and Ripple if you need them.